Divine Money, God is about to alter the way you make money. Written and published by God Daily News. Introduction. Imagine a river, its water representing wealth, flowing directly from the divine source. In Divine Money, you're given the map to that river. With wisdom drawn straight from the Bible, you'll learn how to navigate the currents of financial decisions and stewardship. Grounded in verses like Philippians 4 verse 19 and Malachi 3 verse 10, it's more than just a guide, it's an invitation to a transformative journey. Curious about what lies downstream? Let's set sail. Chapter 1. Spiritual Riches By immersing yourself completely into spiritual riches, you'll uncover that true wealth goes beyond the material domain, offering a divine prosperity that enriches your soul and deepens your faith. You will discover that having a heart full of thankfulness, humility, and compassion rather than having an abundance of material belongings is what defines spiritual richness. These qualities are invaluable, reflecting the richness of your spirit, rather than the weight of your wallet. As you explore the concept of spiritual wealth, you'll realize it's more than just feeling satisfied with what you have. It's recognizing the profound impact of God's grace on your life and acknowledging His hand in every blessing. It's realizing that your worth isn't tied to your bank account, but to the love and grace of God. You might wonder, how can I immerse myself into this spiritual wealth? It starts with a step that is straightforward yet powerful, bringing your heart into alignment with God's. As you surrender your desires, fears, and dreams to Him, you'll experience a richness of spirit that no earthly treasure can match. You'll feel a deep, fulfilling peace that stems from knowing you're in line with God's plan for your life. Spiritual riches aren't about accumulating more, they're about appreciating more. They invite you to see your life through a lens of grace and gratitude, transforming ordinary moments into extraordinary blessings. Chapter 2. Abundance Mindset Embracing an abundance mindset, you begin to see the world not as a place of scarcity, but one overflowing with opportunities, blessings, and divine abundance. This shift in perspective is fundamental to aligning yourself with God's plan for prosperity. It's not about craving more for the sake of having more, but about recognizing the infinite resources God has made available to you. God's promise in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 states, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you'll abound in every good work. This is the foundation of the abundance mindset. You're not just working for your own prosperity, but to be a vessel of God's blessings to others. However, adopting an abundance mindset isn't simply about positive thinking. It's more profound than that. It's about changing your innermost attitudes towards money, wealth, and God's provision. You've to understand that God's economy isn't limited by the world's economy. His resources aren't subject to inflation or recession. In Philippians 4 verse 19, Paul assures us that, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. This promise is for you, but it requires a shift in your mindset. You need to believe in God's capacity to provide abundantly, and in your ability, with His guidance, to manage that abundance responsibly. An abundance mindset is a faith-filled, powerful tool in your journey towards divine money management. Chapter 3. Faithfulness Principles Moving forward, it's imperative to grasp the principles of faithfulness, which are key to managing divine money effectively and responsibly. The Bible guides us to be faithful stewards of our resources, encompassing not just money, but time, talents, and even relationships. Firstly, understand that faithfulness in finance is about more than just being responsible. It's about aligning your financial decisions with your faith values. This might mean making sacrifices, like avoiding certain investments that don't align with your beliefs, or giving generously even when it's challenging. The Bible says in Luke 16 verse 10, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. This emphasizes the importance of being faithful in the small things. 
If you're diligent and honest in managing a small amount of money wisely, you'll be trusted with more. It's not about the amount you have, but how you handle it. Chapter 4 Tithing Insights Building on the foundation of faithfulness, let's now explore the concept of tithing, an integral practice in managing divine money. Tithing, in simple terms, is giving a tenth of your earnings back to God. It's an act of worship and a way to acknowledge that all you have comes from Him. You might wonder, why should I give a part of my hard-earned money? The answer lies in the Bible, in Malachi 3 verse 10, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I'll not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you won't have room enough for it. By tithing, you're demonstrating your trust in God to provide for you. But tithing isn't just about money, it's about your heart. It's a tangible way to express your gratitude to God for His provision. It's an act of obedience that strengthens your relationship with Him. Chapter 5 God's Provision Understanding God's provision in your life is the next step in mastering divine money management. God's provision isn't solely about physical or financial blessings, but also the divine wisdom and guidance He provides. You're not alone in your journey to financial freedom and prosperity. God is there, ready to support and guide you, if you're willing to trust and follow His lead. In the book of Philippians, Paul wrote, and my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4 verse 19, ESV. This is a powerful reminder that God is your ultimate provider. It's not your job, your business, or even your bank account that sustains you, but God. God's provision, however, doesn't mean you'll be exempt from trials, financial or otherwise. God uses these challenges to strengthen your faith and reliance on Him. In Deuteronomy 8 verse 3 it's written, He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man doesn't live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord, NIV. This passage teaches that God's provision extends beyond physical needs, nourishing your spirit as well. Embrace the concept of God's provision in your life. It's not about having everything you want, but learning to rely on God for your needs. This doesn't mean you shouldn't aim for prosperity, but remember, your ultimate security and success lie in God's hands. Trust Him, and He'll guide your path to divine money management. Chapter 6 Stewardship Strategies In the domain of divine money management, stewardship strategies are essential for aligning your financial decisions with God's wisdom and guidance. Stewardship in its essence, is management of the resources God has entrusted to you. It's not just about money, but also time, talents, and even relationships. You see, it's not so much about how much you have, but how you use what you've been given. God doesn't look at the size of your bank account, He looks at how you manage it. The Bible teaches us in Luke 16 verse 10, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. So, where do you begin? Start by acknowledging that everything you have comes from God. This mindset shift is vital. It's not your money, it's God's money. He's just allowing you to manage it. Next, make a budget. Proverbs 27 verse 23 advises, Be sure you know the condition of your flocks, give careful attention to your herds. In other words, know where your money is going. Lastly, give generously. The Bible is clear that those who give, receive. Not necessarily in material wealth, but in ways that matter more. As 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Stewardship isn't just a strategy, it's a lifestyle. It's about faithfulness, trust, and obedience to God. It's His money, after all. Treat it with care. Chapter 7 Divine Wisdom As you faithfully steward God's resources, you'll find divine wisdom playing a key role in your financial decisions. 
The concept of divine wisdom isn't about human intelligence or worldly knowledge. Instead, it's the profound understanding and insight that comes directly from God, guiding us in every aspect of life, including our finances. You might be wondering, how can I tap into this divine wisdom? The answer is simple, through prayer, meditation on God's word, and seeking his guidance in all things. James 1 verse 5 tells us, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. This is a powerful promise that assures you that God is willing to provide the wisdom you need to manage his resources effectively. Remember, divine wisdom isn't about getting rich quick or finding easy solutions. It's about gaining a godly perspective on your resources and making decisions that honor God. It's about understanding that money isn't the end goal, but a tool God has given you to bless others and advance His kingdom. Chapter 8 Righteous Wealth Embracing the concept of righteous wealth means seeing your finances through God's lens, recognizing that wealth isn't simply about personal gain, but about stewardship and generosity. You're called upon to manage the resources God has entrusted you with, wisely and ethically. This isn't about hoarding, but about being a responsible custodian, using your wealth to glorify God and further His kingdom. In the Bible, Proverbs 13 verse 22 tells us, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. This doesn't only refer to material possessions, but also to the legacy of faith, integrity, and good stewardship. It's about building wealth that lasts, wealth that's built on righteous principles and used in righteous ways. Consider the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. The servants who utilized their talents wisely were praised and rewarded, while the one who didn't make good use of his talent was rebuked. This teaches us that God expects us to use our resources, including our wealth, productively and not to waste or hide them away. Chapter 9 Blessing Others While managing your wealth righteously is important, it's equally key to understand that God's divine financial plan also involves using your financial abundance to bless others. God's Word encourages us to be generous and willing to share, thereby laying up treasure for ourselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, 1 Timothy 6 verses 18-19. This principle isn't just about monetary wealth. It's about the richness of your spirit and the willingness to help others. When you bless others with your wealth, you're not just giving away money or resources. You're investing in God's kingdom and planting seeds that will yield a harvest of blessings. You're extending God's love and kindness towards those in need, reflecting the generosity of our Heavenly Father. It's a divine cycle where your blessings become a conduit for God's blessings to flow into others' lives. In Proverbs 11 verse 25, it says, A generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. This means, when you give willingly and generously, it not only blesses the recipient but it also comes back to you. It's not about receiving in return, but about understanding the divine principle of giving. Chapter 10 Overcoming Obstacles Sailing through the choppy waters of financial challenges can be intimidating, but remember, God has equipped you with the strength to overcome any obstacle that stands in your way. Your financial journey won't always be smooth sailing. There will be storms, high tides, and unforeseen setbacks. But don't let these challenges discourage you. Instead, let them serve as stepping stones to a stronger financial future. God encourages you to persevere through trials, as told in James 1 verse 12, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he stood the test he'll receive the crown of life. Your financial struggles aren't punishments, they're tests of your faith and resilience. And with God's help, you're more than capable to pass them. When you're faced with financial obstacles, don't panic or lose hope. Turn to God in prayer, lean on His wisdom, and trust His plan for your life. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 advises, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. God doesn't promise an easy journey, but He does promise to guide you through it. 
rely on him, continue to work hard, and maintain a positive attitude. You'll find that with God, no financial challenge is insurmountable. Instead, each challenge is an opportunity for growth and for witnessing God's faithfulness in your life. Chapter 11 Faith-Filled Decisions After successfully overcoming your financial obstacles with God's guidance, it's time to take a bold step forward and start making faith-filled decisions that align with God's plan for your financial prosperity. Remember, financial decisions made from a place of faith and not fear often yield the best results. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 tells you to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your path straight. This scripture encourages you to lean on God's wisdom rather than your own limited understanding when making financial choices. You can't expect to make sound financial decisions without inviting God into the process. Ask God for guidance and clarity before making any major financial decision. Seek His wisdom through prayer and scripture reading. Be patient and wait for His direction. You'll find that His timing is always perfect and His guidance is always right. Moreover, incorporate God's financial principles into your decision-making process, such as tithing, giving generously, avoiding debt, and saving prudently. These principles are clearly laid out in the Bible and are meant to lead you towards financial prosperity. Chapter 12. Cultivating Contentment. Certainly, one of the most powerful yet often overlooked aspects of financial prosperity is cultivating a sense of contentment in your life. You might be wondering, how does contentment relate to money? According to the Bible, contentment is a key aspect of divine prosperity. In Philippians 4 verse 12, Paul says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. But how do you cultivate this contentment? Begin by recognizing that contentment isn't endeavoring or lack of ambition. Rather, it's an understanding that your worth and happiness aren't tied to your economic status. It's acknowledging that you already possess all you need in God's love and grace. Start by expressing gratitude for what you currently have. This doesn't mean you stop pushing for more, but acknowledge God's blessings in your life right now. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 tells us to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Next, learn to find joy in simple things. Not all blessings come with dollar signs. The joy of a sunset, the love of family, the peace in prayer, these are all priceless gifts from God. Finally, practice generosity. Giving not only blesses others, but it also helps us to keep a healthy perspective about money. Proverbs 11 verses 24 to 25 notes that those who give freely grow richer, while those who hold back diminish. Cultivating contentment in your life is a step toward experiencing God's divine prosperity. It's not just about wealth, it's about a rich life in Christ. Chapter 13. Trusting God. As you foster a sense of contentment, another key step towards divine prosperity lies in placing your absolute trust in God. This isn't merely about lip service or empty promises, but a deep-rooted conviction that God is in control of all circumstances, including your financial situation. Trust in God means believing that He has your best interests at heart, even when you're not sure of the path ahead. It's about surrendering your fears, doubts, and anxieties, and replacing them with faith and confidence in His provision. When times get tough, and it seems like your finances are spiraling out of control, that's when you need to trust Him the most. Always keep in mind that God is aware of your requirements even before you ask for them. Matthew 6 verses 31 to 33 says, So don't worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Chapter 14 Biblical Prosperity Understanding biblical prosperity can truly transform your relationship with money, aligning your financial decisions with God's wisdom and promises. 
It's not about accumulating wealth for selfish purposes, but about stewarding God's blessings to fulfill His purposes. Biblical prosperity is about living in abundance, not just in material wealth, but also in peace, joy, and spiritual growth. In the Bible, prosperity is often linked to obedience and faithfulness to God. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says, But remember the Lord your God, for it's He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Here, you're reminded that your skills, talents, and even the opportunities you encounter are all gifts from God. As a result, as you work and earn, remember to thank and honor Him. Moreover, in the book of Proverbs, wisdom is portrayed as a path to prosperity. Proverbs 3 verse 16 says, Long life is in her right hand, in her left hand are riches and honor. This verse highlights that true prosperity extends beyond finances. It includes a long, fulfilling life and honor in society. However, it's important to beware of the love of money, which 1 Timothy 6 verse 10 warns can lead to ruin and destruction. It's not money itself that's evil, but the love of it that can lead you astray. Hence, balance is key. Seek prosperity but not at the expense of your relationship with God, your integrity, or your love for others. Chapter 15 Generous Living Moving from a mindset of biblical prosperity, the concept of generous living emerges as another key aspect of a divine relationship with money. Generous living doesn't just mean giving your money away, it's about aligning your financial actions with God's Word and His divine principles. This is where your relationship with money becomes about more than just you, it's about stewardship, community, and compassion. In Proverbs 11 verses 24 to 25, we find a profound principle, one person gives freely, yet gains even more, another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. This verse isn't suggesting that you give away everything you have, but rather that you should give generously, with a joyful heart, and trust in God's promise of provision. Generous living also means being a good steward of what God's given you. It's about making wise financial decisions, being responsible, and using your resources to bless others. In 2 Corinthians 9 verses 6-7, Paul encourages us, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Embrace generous living. It's a lifestyle that reflects God's heart, expands your own, and leaves a lasting impact on the world around you. Trust in God, live generously, and watch as He multiplies blessings in your life. Chapter 16 Kingdom Investing Often, you've probably heard about investing your money wisely, but have you considered that your financial decisions can also reflect your faith through kingdom investing? This concept isn't about trying to make a quick buck or chase the latest stock market trend. Instead, it's a method of investing that puts God's priorities at the forefront of your financial decisions. Kingdom investing involves aligning your investment strategies with biblical principles. It's about seeking God's wisdom in your financial decisions and putting your resources to work for the advancement of His kingdom. You're not just investing for your personal gain, but for the benefit of others and the glory of God. Consider Matthew 6 verse 20, But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin don't destroy, and where thieves don't break in and steal. This scripture suggests that our investments should have an eternal perspective. When you choose to invest in kingdom-minded businesses and organizations, you're storing up treasures in heaven. You're making an eternal impact by supporting causes that align with God's heart. So, how do you get started with kingdom investing? Begin by praying for wisdom and guidance. Consider the guidance of a financial advisor who reflects the same ideals as you do concerning your faith. Research companies and investments that align with God's principles. Remember, it's not just about the potential return on investment, but the impact your investment can have in advancing God's kingdom. With kingdom investing, you're not just making wise financial decisions, you're making divinely inspired ones. 
Chapter 17 Debt Freedom While kingdom investing helps you align your finances with divine principles, achieving debt freedom is another significant step in fulfilling your spiritual commitment to God's economic plan. It's more than just paying off your loans or credit card balances. It's about surrendering your financial worries to God, trusting in His provision, and allowing Him to guide your financial decisions. Debt often feels like a heavy burden that you're forced to carry. It's exhausting, frustrating, and it can feel like a constant reminder of past mistakes. But remember, God doesn't want you to live under the weight of financial strain. In Romans 13 verse 8, the Bible says, Owe no one anything, except to love each other. God desires for you to experience the peace and freedom that comes from being debt-free. So, how can you achieve debt freedom? Start by acknowledging your debt as a barrier between you and the abundant life God wants for you. Then, commit to a plan. Whether it's consolidating your debts, creating a strict budget, or seeking professional financial advice, you're not alone in this journey. Pray that you will have the ability to make these significant choices with wisdom and insight. Chapter 18 Financial Integrity In your pursuit of divine wealth, upholding financial integrity is an important step that God calls you to take. The Bible makes several references to honest wealth accumulation, denouncing ill-gotten riches. Proverbs 13 verse 11, for instance, states that, Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. This verse emphasizes the importance of patience, hard work, and honesty in your financial journey. Now, what does financial integrity mean? It's about being honest and transparent in all your financial dealings, whether it's paying your taxes, repaying your debts, or honoring your business commitments. It's about resisting the temptation to take shortcuts or engage in unethical practices for quick financial gain. It's about treating others fairly and generously, as you'd want to be treated. Practicing financial integrity is a reflection of your character and your faith. It shows that you trust God's plan for your financial prosperity, rather than resorting to dishonest means. It's a confirmation of your belief that God will provide for your needs, as promised in Philippians 4 verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Maintaining financial integrity, while important, may not always be easy, especially in challenging situations. However, remember that God is always with you and that His love is unwavering. Make the commitment today to uphold financial integrity in all aspects of your life and watch how God changes the way you make money. Chapter 19 Purposeful Work You're not just working for the sake of it, you're called to engage in purposeful work that aligns with God's plan for your life. The Bible reminds us in Proverbs 16 verse 3, Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Your work isn't simply a means to an end, but an opportunity to serve God and make a positive impact in the world. It's essential to understand that purposeful work doesn't necessarily mean doing something grandiose or having a high-ranking position. God's definition of purposeful work can be as simple as being a diligent employee, a caring teacher, or a devoted parent. It's about using the talents and skills He's given you to glorify Him and serve others. As you navigate your career, you may face challenges and obstacles. But remember, God uses these trials to shape and refine you. James 1 verse 12 encourages us, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Chapter 20 Divine Partnerships Often, God places people in your life to form divine partnerships, creating a powerful synergy that furthers His kingdom's work. These divine partnerships aren't random, they're crucial and strategic, designed to maximize your potential and fulfill your God-given purpose. God doesn't want you to walk this path alone. He sends fellow believers to share the journey, to encourage, assist, and uplift you in times of joy and adversity. Now, you might wonder, how can you recognize these divine partnerships? Well, they're often characterized by mutual respect, shared vision, 
and a common goal to glorify God. They could be mentors, friends, business partners, or even family members. They're the ones who challenge you to grow, hold you accountable, and inspire you with their faithfulness. Remember, divine partnerships aren't solely for your benefit. You're called to be a blessing to others, too. God equips you with unique gifts, talents, and resources to contribute to these relationships. It's not just about receiving, it's about giving as well. In the context of divine money, these partnerships can bring about financial blessings. However, it's crucial to keep the right perspective. Don't let the love of money overshadow the love of God and people. The Bible warns in 1 Timothy 6 verse 10, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Chapter 21 Legacy Building Building on the foundation of divine partnerships, let's now explore how you can create a lasting legacy through wise stewardship of the financial blessings God provides. It is important to keep in mind that the accumulation of riches is not the only goal, rather, it is the utilization of one's resources to influence and impact the world for the glory of God. Legacy building is about more than just leaving an inheritance, it's about leaving an impact. Proverbs 13 verse 22 says, A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. This isn't just about money, but also about values, principles, and a spiritual heritage. Think of your wealth as a tool, not a goal. It's a means to serve others, to support God's work, and to make a difference in the world. As you apply God's financial principles, you'll see your wealth not as a personal possession, but as a divine trust. Invest in things that last. Matthew 6 verse 20 advises us to store up treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin don't destroy, and where thieves don't break in and steal. This could mean supporting charities, investing in your local church, or helping those in need. Finally, remember that your most valuable legacy is the influence you have on others. Use your wealth to show God's love, to encourage generosity, and to inspire faithfulness. As you do, you'll not only build a legacy that lasts, but also one that reflects the heart of God. Legacy building isn't about making a name for yourself, but about making a difference for God. Step forward in faith, and let God guide your financial decisions. Chapter 22 Supernatural Favor As you continue on your journey of faith, you'll notice that God's supernatural favor starts to manifest in your financial life, blessing you beyond your wildest dreams. This favor isn't something you've earned or deserve. Instead, it's a divine gift, a mark of God's love and grace. It's not about what you've done, but about who God is. Supernatural favor goes beyond human understanding. It's not tied to worldly standards of success, wealth, or power. Rather, it's linked to obedience, faithfulness, and trust in God. When you commit your plans to the Lord and trust in Him wholeheartedly, He'll start to direct your path and bless your finances in ways you never thought possible. This favor, as described in Psalm 5 verse 12, surrounds you like a shield when you're in right standing with God. It's not about wealth for wealth's sake, but about the manifestation of God's promise to provide for His children. You may wonder, how can I attract this supernatural favor? The key is to stay obedient to God's word, to keep faith even in times of uncertainty, and to give cheerfully. God honors a cheerful giver. When you give, not out of obligation, but out of love, you open up doors for God's favor to flow into your life. Chapter 23 Heavenly Rewards Moving forward on your divine financial journey, you'll discover that the heavenly rewards God bestows aren't just about material wealth, but a deeper, more fulfilling sense of spiritual prosperity. This is the true essence of divine abundance, a state of well-being that transcends the physical and extends into the spiritual. It's about aligning your desires with God's plan for your life and trusting in His divine provision. The scriptures provide us with a clear understanding of this concept. In Matthew 6 verse 20, Jesus teaches us to access treasures in heaven that can't be destroyed or stolen. 
This isn't a call to renounce earthly possessions, but an invitation to prioritize our spiritual wealth over material things. When your focus is on heavenly rewards, your heart follows suit, aligning itself with God's will and not your own fleeting desires. You'll find that as you continue to seek God's kingdom first, as mentioned in Matthew 6 verse 33, your needs will be met, including your financial needs. This is the promise of God. He doesn't just give you what you need to survive, He provides abundantly, exceeding your expectations. But this isn't merely about money, it's about a flourishing life, filled with peace, joy, and purpose. The key to accessing these heavenly rewards lies in your trust in God and obedience to His Word. As you faithfully pursue a God-oriented life, you'll notice a transformation in your finances, reflecting the divine blessings poured into your life. Remember, your heavenly reward far surpasses any earthly gain. Chapter 24 Testimonial Transformations Now, let's turn our attention to those who've witnessed firsthand the transformative power of divine financial provision in their lives. These testimonial transformations aren't just mere stories, they're evidence of a faithful God working to provide for his children. Consider the story of David. He was a young entrepreneur who'd struggled with his business for years. He was burdened with debts and on the brink of bankruptcy. He decided to seek divine intervention, started tithing faithfully, and surrendered his financial worries to God. In time, his business started to turn around. Today, David runs a successful business, free from the shackles of debt. His transformation is a demonstration of the power of faith and divine intervention in financial matters. Consider the situation of Mary, a single mother who is attempting to make ends meet by working two jobs. She was barely scraping by, but she never failed to trust God with her finances. She believed in the biblical principle of sowing and reaping, and despite her scarcity, she gave generously. Mary's financial situation didn't change overnight, but her faithfulness was rewarded. Today, she's financially stable and able to provide for her children comfortably. These stories aren't outliers. They're part of a pattern of testimonial changes that showcase the power of God in financial matters. They're evidence that when you align your financial decisions with God's principles, you pave the way for divine provision. Chapter 25 Prayerful Planning In your journey towards divine prosperity, prayerful planning is an essential step. It's about seeking divine guidance, setting godly goals, and aligning your financial plans with Scripture. Let's explore how you can incorporate these principles into your financial planning, bringing you closer to God's abundance. Drawing upon your faith, you'll find that seeking divine guidance through prayerful planning is a powerful path towards financial wisdom and prosperity. It's about embracing the divine wisdom that can guide you in making sound financial decisions. The Bible teaches us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, in all your ways submit to Him, and He'll make your paths straight. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 Thus, it's not merely about asking for financial blessings, but seeking God's wisdom and guidance in your financial journey. Consider prayer as your intimate conversation with God about your financial matters. It's about opening your heart to God's divine guidance and wisdom. Ask Him to enlighten your mind and help you make wise financial decisions. Remember to surrender your financial plans to God and trust His divine providence. It's about acknowledging that God is the source of all blessings and He can guide you to financial prosperity. Keep in mind that seeking divine guidance is an ongoing process. Make prayerful planning a part of your daily routine. Let God's wisdom guide you on your journey to financial prosperity. Regularly setting godly goals is an essential step in your prayerful planning towards achieving financial prosperity. These aren't mere worldly aspirations, instead, they're targets that align with God's purpose for your life, leading you towards spiritual and economic growth. Establishing godly goals requires you to first seek His wisdom. Like Solomon, ask God for discernment in managing resources and making decisions, 1 Kings 3 verse 9. Listen carefully and let His guidance shape your ambitions. 
Next, translate his insights into actionable goals. Remember, God's plans aren't about extravagance, but sufficiency. So, design your goals around responsible stewardship, generosity, and provision for your family's needs, 1 Timothy 5 verse 8. Write down your goals and be specific. There's power in penning down your vision, making it tangible and achievable, Habakkuk 2 verse 2. Having set your godly goals, it's now important to align them with Scripture through prayerful planning. This isn't about simply hoping for the best but deliberately seeking God's guidance on how to achieve your financial ambitions. Remember, the Bible is the ultimate roadmap to prosperity. In Proverbs 16 verse 9, it says, In their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. This scripture emphasizes the importance of aligning your plans with God's word to guarantee success. Don't just make plans, pray about them, meditate on God's word, and allow him to guide your steps. Moreover, when your plans align with God's word, your motivation becomes divine. This isn't just about improving your financial status but also fulfilling God's purpose for your life. In everything, seek to glorify Him. In your financial journey, remember, God's provision is like a ceaseless river, constantly flowing to meet your needs. Embrace an abundance mindset, practice faithful stewardship, and experience the blessings of divine money management. Witness the transformative power of tithing and invite supernatural favor into your life. Let God guide your financial decisions and watch as your wealth grows, not only in your bank account but also in spiritual riches. Keep praying, keep trusting, and keep believing. Thanks for listening.